Now, one of the greatest gifts you can give is to donate your organs after your death. But even if you decide to become a donor, saving a life is not guaranteed. Emma Thomas explains. Alice, you're a <laughs> This is Lee. He was the pride and joy of his mother, Alison Reynolds. That's Lee on his first day at uh, Winston Churchill Comprehensive School in Woking. Very proud mum that day. That's in Cornwall, the day he decided to terrorise everyone with a crab. Uh, full of mischief, as usual. And he was very protective of his two younger sisters, Carly and George. So this is the last um, Mother's Day card that I received from Lee. Mum, smile if you love me. And... Sorry. Just a few months after his 21st birthday, Alison received a phone call to say her son had been involved in a car crash and was in hospital. It was shocking. Um, with all the wires and tubes and the machines that were keeping him alive. Lee was in a medically induced coma for six days and didn't respond when doctors tried to bring him round. So it was the Sunday morning that we were told that there was no hope for Lee. It was a strange, strange time. You don't expect to be told your 21-year-old son is, is clinically dead. You don't expect to be approached to ask to be asked if you'd be prepared to donate his organs. It's, it's not something we'd ever discussed as a family. We'd never talked about it. We'd never, we didn't know anyone that it had affected. We'd, we'd never, it, never given it a thought. The decision to donate an organ can make the difference between life or death. When the decision is made not to donate, then we know up to nine people on that transplant waiting list may not be transplanted as a result of that. It's such a profound thing that somebody would donate to save someone's life and I can only be grateful. It's, I can't even, I don't even have the words to say thank you because it's changed my life profoundly. In Kent and here in East Sussex, there are nearly 200 people waiting for a transplant. Many people decide they want to donate their organs when they die, but even when they make their wishes known and carry a donor card, sometimes the transplants don't happen. Why is that and what's being done about it? There is a desperate need for organs, but some relatives are saying no to donating them, even if their loved one has said yes, because they can't bear the thought of them being removed or given to someone else. In Kent and East Sussex, as an example, last year, there were 110 people who received life-saving transplants, but on the other side of that, there were 16 people who died. Alison had a dilemma. Her son wasn't on the organ donor register, but when she was approached by the nursing team, she remembered his little sister had been watching a children's TV program about organ donation and asked Lee to take her to the doctors so she could sign the form. He took her and she got her donor card and she kept it in her silly little pink purse. And um, that one moment, I think, was the moment that I thought this is what he would have wanted. So we agreed. I just knew at that time that if Lee was going to die, I didn't want it all to be a waste. Um, that some good had to come of that. Lee's organ saved two people's lives. Someone else who is alive today thanks to a transplant is Jackie Dowding. 28 years ago, she received a kidney that saved her life. It's meant freedom, really, to do the things I want to do. It's, it's liberating. I've sailed my boat from Sweden, I've sailed it around Britain, and I'm about to take it to the Azores now. But there's bad news. After some 30 years, her donated kidney is failing. I don't want to live every moment thinking about if my phone rings, there could be a kidney. I don't want to live like that. The stakes are high, and even though they've managed to increase the amount of donations, there's still not enough. 
When I caught up with Tracy Gibson, she told me five families had recently gone against the wishes of their relatives and overridden their decision to donate. Numbers seem tiny, but five patients potentially could have gone on to save 45 lives. And to put that into perspective, in the southeast of England last year, 16 patients died while awaiting a life-saving transplant. Every conversation helps, and on the front line is Jacqueline Kennedy. As a specialist nurse walking into tough situations is part of her job. She works in intensive care units across Kent and East Sussex. She's there to support bereaved families and raise the subject of organ donation. Sometimes there will be one member of the family that will say no to donation. Um, sadly, in my experience, though, families tend to then support the no rather than the yes. But is there another way of doing things? In Wales, for instance, you have an opt-out system where it's assumed everyone will donate unless you make it clear you don't want to. But even though it could mean the difference between life and death, Jackie doesn't think grieving families should have to carry out the wishes of their loved ones, even though they've signed up to the register. Well, that's their wish. I would never take that from them. That's their loved ones, so that's their decision. So you would say even though if a kidney became available that you needed and the family said no, that they should still have the right to do that? Well, it's not my personal opinion. I don't think is relevant there because I think the, the, the opinion is of the people, <coughs> of, of the relations of the person that's died. In hindsight, Ali wishes she'd spoken to Lee about it because although she could bear to give away his other organs, she drew the line at the beating heart of her son. It's a decision she regrets. Um, I just think it's a waste. He had a healthy heart. He, he was 21. There was nothing wrong with his heart. It was Somebody probably died because they didn't get that. Um, probably another youngster or a husband or a father. Alison feels very strongly that families shouldn't be able to override decisions. If somebody's taken the time and the effort to, to put their names down on the organ donor register and they've expressed their wishes by carrying a donor card, then no, I don't think anyone should have the right to override that, that wish, no.